I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus, and we're delighted for you to enjoy this study with us. In ancient China, the most important person uh, in their community was their scholars. Their, their teachers were their number one people. Con Confucius rose higher than generals <laughs> uh, in, in the army because he was a, a profound teacher, teacher of life, of how, of how to live. You will notice that the Lord Jesus Christ was not called a preacher. He was not even called a healer. He, he, he was called a teacher. And it says, when they came to him, it says, we know thou art a teacher sent from God. And, and so uh, teaching uh, is, is very necessary. And in the world that we live in at this moment, we need teaching possibly more than any other one thing. So let us learn in all of our doings. Let's learn. And we believe that there are more Bible scholars as of this moment than there has ever been in the history of mankind. I rejoice in that, and I thank God for each of you who are learning. We are teaching you out of this beautiful syllabus here called Demons and Deliverance, Principalities and Powers, and this is Volume 1. We do have Volume 2. Volume 2 deals with the subject in a different way, and that it actually deals with the cults and, and witchcraft and, and all of these things uh, as they do exist. Volume 1 deals with the doctrine that we are dealing with here of demons and, and devils and their activities. We have now come uh, to Lesson 15 in this series, uh, which uh, says that demon spirits are capable and are able to cause human uh, sickness and human uh, disease. Uh, we have uh, gone through many different, uh, different uh, avenues of, of learning in, in relationship uh, to, uh, to the activities of the devil. And now we are going to see how he uh, actually uh, comes against the body, the, the, the human body, that there can be a, a thing wrong with you that is not normal, not natural, but that it is demonic. Now, it would take maybe the Spirit of the Lord to discern, you know, what is just a physical problem or, or, or a demonic problem that was actually put there by the devil himself and should be taken off. <laughs> Having no right to be there, it should be taken off by the power and the authority of the disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. In this lesson, uh, we have infallible proofs uh, that there are uh, evil entities uh, that can bring a disease or sickness upon the human person, and that medical doctors find baffling cases which cannot be explained uh, medically or scientifically. And they know that, and they, they are ready to admit that. There are literally millions of Americans that, are, that the doctors are baffled. They said, we don't, we can't tell what's wrong with you. We can give you this medicine, that medicine, uh, but we're not sure what is wrong with you. In some cases, those persons are tormented by one of these evil spirits that we have been learning about here in, in the class, in that uh, the, the devil fell from heaven. He brought with him one-third of all the angels uh, that were in heaven, and that these are the demons who are, uh, are against God, and they hate God, and seeing that you are made in the image of God, they want to hurt you in order to hurt God. Anytime a human is hurt, it hurts God. He is our Heavenly Father. He is our Creator. He made us in His image and His likeness. He didn't make us a donkey to bray, and He didn't make us a lion to roar. He made us a human to love. And, and we are the object of His love, and we are to love Him as our object of love. And the devil don't like that. And he would like to mar the image of the human person with disease and with sickness in order to hurt God. Now, when you get to know that, you will fight disease in a, in a stronger way. And you will ask God, is this thing a, a, a physical problem or is it a demonic thing? If it is, we will drive out the spirit and they will be well, or we will pray the prayer of faith for the healing and they will be well by God's mighty power. Now, in the book of Job, which we understand the oldest book in the world, in chapter 2 and verse 7, it says, Satan went forth from the presence of Jehovah and that he smote Job, who was a dis disciple of God and a follower of God. He smote him with sore boils. Boils. Man, there's nothing hardly in this world that hurts like a boil. I've had them in 
in very strange parts of my body. And I tell you, when that poison comes out of there, the pain cannot be measured. It is so great. But he, he smote him a boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. I've never seen a person with that many. I've seen with one, one or two or three or four, and, and they suffer excruciating. Even to look at it, you can almost see the devil in it. You know, it just looks mean with the little tendrils running out from the, from the center of it. But Satan caused these terrible sores to come upon this man who was God's servant, who was a, a good man. But he said that this man would not serve God if it were not that he had a well body. And that if he had a sick body, and, and if he had anything uh, within him that, uh, that made him ill and made him hurt, that he would, then, he would then not serve God. God said, that isn't true. He is not serving me because of good conditions. He's serving me because he loves me. He cares for me. He knows I am his God. And, and so it is not true. And so it was a proving that Satan was wrong and that God was true. Uh, Job found and discovered that there was no medicine of any kind that could heal him because Job had no physical disability. He had no or organic uh, malfunctions of any kind. He had upon him a direct, a direct assault by the devil and, and that his, his physician and his healer had to be God, that there was no other healer for him. That same man we discover in Job 42 and 10, it says, and Jehovah turned the captivity of Job. God just got tired of it. And he got weary of it. And God says, I'll turn this thing around. And when he prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he'd had before. And so when Job was willing to pray for those that didn't understand him and those that uh, accused him, falsely accused him, and, and then God instantly healed him and, and gave him twice as much as he'd ever had before the devil touched him. I, I like to say that if the devil touches you, when God heals you, he'll give you twice as much as you ever had before. He'll, he'll just show the devil how, how, bad, how bad he missed it. But what we want to teach you is this, that there's some sicknesses uh, that are not physical, that, that they are simply are not physical, uh, that they are a spiritual situation, and that Satan in his anger and hurt has brought some of these things uh, upon us, and that we can resist them and take them off by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9, in verse 32, it says, As they went out, behold, they brought unto him a dumb man possessed with a devil. A dumb man. And so here was a man uh, that was dumb, and it was a possession of the devil. Uh, he wasn't dumb because uh, he had no, no, no throat and no tongue uh, to speak with, but he, the devil had grabbed it and bound it to where it could not speak. And so when the devil was cast out, it says, uh, the dumb spake. Isn't that something? As soon as the devil was cast out, the dumb spake, and multitudes marveled. Isn't that great too? I like that. And they said it was never so seen in Israel. They had never seen the power of God in such a way. They, they, and I, you know, there are many churches that way today. They, they've got these kind of illnesses and sicknesses in them. They don't know where they came from. They don't know what to do with them. They can't get them well. And, and when God heals them, they just simply marvel. They say, hey, man, I've never seen it like this before. Never seen it. Well, God is ready in this hour of human history to do more than he's ever done before. This is God's hour of glorious deliverance. Now, if Satan puts it on, God can take it off. <laughs> Praise God forever. And, and, uh, and if, you're living, if you're living in a place of great victory, in a place of great anointing, the devil can't put stuff on you. He just simply cannot put it on you. He can want to, but he can't put it on you. Uh, uh, this doesn't mean you can't get sick because there are natural means of, of getting uh, different kinds of illnesses, but the devil can't plague you living under the glorious victory of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is defeated by God's mighty power. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, verse 25, Jesus saw the people running together. He, brute, he rebuked the foul, the foul spirit. There's a demon spirit that he called foul, which means dirty and, and ugly and, and, and terrible. And, and, the, and the dumb and the deaf spirit came out of this little child, and he says, I charge thee, come out of him and enter him no more enter no more into him. So it was a permanent uh, deliverance. So we find that deafness or dumbness uh, can be labeled under certain circumstances as demon power, and it can be removed by speaking the word of God's strength and power over that person 
and commanding them to be healed by the mighty power of God. And, and so our lesson today has to do with there are demon spirits which can cause some sickness and disease in the human race, and that these are some of the activities of the devil and Satan. He doesn't only just want to take you to hell. He wants you to be miserable on the way. And so you have to resist him and command those things to come off of you. There's some of us uh, that we bear sickness and sickness and sickness, but we don't ever just come against this thing and say, say, get out of there. <laughs> You'd be amazed at what would happen if you would take authority. We read a, a, a very touching story in Luke's Gospel, chapter 13. Uh, here was a woman. That it says that she had a spirit of infirmity. Now, uh, I am sure that her friends didn't know it. You know, the doctors didn't know it. They all did the best they could. They examined her every way they could, and she stayed sick. Uh, she had had this thing for 18 years. 18 years she had been sick. She had been diagnosed and re-diagnosed, and she'd been in the clinic and out of the clinic uh, for 18 years. And this thing had bowed her body together. Are you following me here? I I'm in Luke's Gospel, chapter 13, beginning reading at verse 11 and reading right straight through to verse 16. Her body, it said, was bowed over, you know, way over. And sh she could in no wise lift up herself. She could not straighten her back. It was impossible to straighten her back. Now, it looked, it looked like for everything, it, it looked like a natural disease. Oh, everybody could say, my, that must be arthritis of the spine. <laughs> you see, oh yes, uh, you, 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 you have some terrible disease that's, that's caused your, your backbone uh, to, to become crooked, you know? And the Bible says that she had a spirit of infirmity, that when it was taken off of her, her back straightened right up. When Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. Isn't that sweet? D don't you like, you know, so many of us make such big things out of a healing, or, or especially an exorcism, casting forth of the devil. And, and that always oh, say we must fast and pray for, you know, and get ready. Well, now, wait a minute. Jesus wasn't fasting and praying. He just found the situation and took care of it. Did you know that God expects you and me to have divine and spiritual authority to set people free? He expects us to have it. And I have it. Bless God. <laughs> and I want you to have it. You have it by faith. You believe. You believe. And through believing, it becomes a truth, and a truth that's so glorious. It is so glorious. Uh, he just very sweetly said, a, a lady, you're loose from your infirmity. You're loose from it. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight. Her backbone popped, and it went right straight up tall. She, and she, it says, glorified God. You know, the Bible gives you the perfect pattern. If you're not going to glorify God, you're not going to get into miracles either. God does not run and operate a charity hospital for the devil. Uh, God operates, you know, a, a wonderful and a glorious healing ministry to those that wish to love God. Now, the ruler of the synagogue, now, isn't it, isn't it amazing in these lessons how we come back to the religious men? I'm telling you, some of you may have to leave the church you're in because you've got a preacher that's a mocker that doesn't believe in the power of God, doesn't believe in the Spirit of God, doesn't believe in the healing power of the Lord, and it's an abomination for you to stay on that type of thing. Uh, you're not supposed to go and to the store and buy rotten fruit to eat it because it, 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 it's not good for your body. And you're not supposed to listen to rotten mess. It don't matter where it comes from. If it's not wholesome and if it's not from the Bible, then you mustn't do it. Now, now here was a woman, 18 years sick, 18 years, bowed over, couldn't only see the ground, couldn't see the stars, couldn't see the beautiful buildings, couldn't see up, could only see down. And Jesus didn't make a big commotion. He just says, dear lady, you're loose from your infirmity. Laid his hand gently over on her and, and, and patted her, and instantly she was made well. And then the ruler of the synagogue, the big shot, you know, the guy that was in charge of everything, uh, he answered, with indignation. Now, 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 that goes beyond me, but I've seen it too. I, I've seen people get angry because somebody got healed and it wasn't, didn't happen in their church. Neighbor, it don't matter where it happens. 
if it happens, thank God it happens. This man that was a leader, he, he said he was a ruler of the synagogue. He was top boss in there. He should have said, oh, thank God. Little lady, I've seen you walk around here all bent over for all these years. Thank God. Who? thank God. But he didn't. The Bible says, the Bible says, which is true, that with indignation, he was angry. He was mad. And because Jesus healed this poor woman. And, 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 and notice, notice, notice what his conjecture was all about. Just <laughs> how hypocritical uh, some people can be. He was angry because Jesus healed her on the Sabbath day. Now, isn't that something? Because he healed her on the Sabbath, on the day of worship. Well, what better worship could you have than when he just says, you're loose from your infirmity? Praise God. Hallelujah. No. He did it on the Sabbath day, and he was very angry about it and, and said to the people, there are six days when men ought to work. Well, he didn't do any work. He didn't do any work. <laughs> he just healed that person. That's not work. That's joy. That's praising God. It says, six days shall man work, and them there, therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. Isn't that something? You can come and be healed six days, but nothing on the Sabbath day. Oh, bless God, nothing on the Sabbath day. You know, if you'll just listen to humans, those that are in error, error are also irrational. You know, they don't think straight. Why, why, why heal? Looks to me like they should set apart the, the Sabbath day only as a day of healing because it is such a spiritual thing to be healed. And on the Sabbath day was a day for spiritual things to take place. So he had it all backwards. He, and he says, six days ought a man to work and therefore come and be healed on the Sabbath day. Can you imagine him quarreling? <laughs> and he was a leader. All the rest of them had to say, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You always have a bunch of bunnies around, you know, that'll, all they know how to do is shake their head up and down this way. Uh, they don't have any backbone of their own. And so, the, so Jesus answered the man. I'm glad Jesus answered him, aren't you? Jesus answered him and said, you hypocrite. Hey, now, buddy, that's getting in the deep water. When you call big shots hypocrites, when you call the, the top men, the bishops, the superintendents, and when you call them hypocrites, you're in trouble, you know. And Jesus was in trouble. He says, you hypocrite. Are you reading it with me? This is Luke's Gospel, chapter 13, verses 11 through verse 16. Jesus said, you hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath day loose his ox or his ass from the stall? You see, you work. You go and take your, your oxen out of the stall. You unlock the gate and you, you let him out. And says, so don't you lead him to water? He says, that's work. Don't you lead him to water? He says, now, now be, to be honest. He says, then ought not this little lady here? He says, did you know that she is a seed of Abraham? It says, this little lady, she is a daughter of Abraham. <laughs> yeah, she belongs to us. She's part of us. She belongs to the church. She's part of the church. Shouldn't she be blessed? Now, now here's the part that's significant, so don't, don't miss it. It says, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years. Doesn't that make you sad? Now, it doesn't say she was sick 18 years. It doesn't say she had some kind of disease for 18 years. It said, see here, Satan has bound her. I didn't put this in the Bible. I know you won't be accusing me of this. Whether you like it or not, you see, you, you, your problem is with Jesus and not with me because I'm only reading out of the Bible. Whom Satan hath bound these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Lord's day, on the Sabbath day. He was reasoning uh, with those people. <laughs> yeah, the, the devil does hurt people physically, and, and the Bible speaks of it. And, and uh, I can tell you now, we, uh, we, we knew of a family. We, Clifton Erickson and I were holding a meeting for Rex Humbert over in Akron, Ohio, and, uh, and a man brought his wife in that was blind, and Brother Erickson laid his hands upon her, and, and she was healed, and she went back to her church. I won't give you the name of the church uh, because you would think I was against them, and, and testified the next Sunday, and, and after church, the pastor called them aside and said, don't come back here anymore. Oh, they said, we belong here. They said, he don't belong here anymore. I'm just taking your name off the roll. They said, well, why? They said, we can't stand that kind of testimony in this church. And they came back weeping. They came back weeping. I mean, to me personally, and said, Brother Sumrall, where are we going to worship? 
And I says, well, how far is it from your place to this place, to the, to the cathedral here in Akron? Oh, they said, a 30 minutes drive. I said, that's the sweetest 30 minutes in the world. Drive it every Sunday and come here and worship God in a place where they believe in the miracles of God and in the power of God that sets people free. Can you imagine, and if I name the church, some of you belong to it, that these people were asked not to come back there anymore simply because the Lord had opened their eyes and this woman had sat in that church for years in total blindness and they did not rejoice. I'm just trying to tell you that this world hasn't changed. That that old devil that hurt people 2,000 years ago, he's still around today. And re religious leaders that were against the power of God in Jesus' day, they're still around. They're still, and you, you talk to some of yours that you know close by you, and you'll discover, they say, oh no, we don't believe in demons. No, no, we don't believe there are any around, and, and we don't believe you could cast them out if there were some. Well, they're, they're living in, 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 in total defeat, just like this leader of the synagogue was 2,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. In, in Manila, Philippines, I had a young man to speak for me that came up out of Indonesia, and he very solemnly and sweetly said, I, I have raised 12 people from the dead. And, and he says, that's not very many. He says, in our country, there are those who have raised as many as 100 people from the dead. And, and so uh, when the service was over, an American missionary tackled him down at the end of the platform and said, uh, were they really dead? Uh, were, were they cold? And, and the little fellow said, yes, they were dead, yeah. All dead people are cold. And, and went through the whole thing very kindly with him. And finally, the little Indonesian looked up and said, have you ever prayed for the dead? And the American missionary said, oh, no, 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 no. Well, he said, uh, you won't ever see the dead raised. You know, neighbors, if you don't believe, you don't receive. And if you say it can't be done, for you, that's true. But not for the total church. The total church can have what it believes for, for what it accepts God for. These are wonderful days in which we live today. But we wish for you to realize and to know I asked the same young man, he had dinner with us that day. I asked him, I said, when a person dies, how do you know whether to pray for them or not? Well, he says, to begin with, we don't do it as persons. We don't have any big shots in our country. It says the church prays for them. It says we pray, we form a circle around them, and we say, Lord, did this person live out the full measure of their days? <clears throat> and the Lord says, yes. Then we go right ahead and proceed with the funeral and, and thank God for another victory in heaven because of their going on to heaven. But if the Lord says, no, their days were cut short by the Satan, then says one of us steps forward and, and we say, death, I command you to take your hand off this person. I command you to go. And he says, immediately, we start singing. And we sing till they get up. And says, God, God does the mighty deliverance. And so we have instances where, where Satan takes life and where Satan makes sick and that we are the ones that have to set them free. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 23, uh, we have that Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, <coughs> healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. His fame went out all Syria, and they brought unto him sick people that were taken of diverse diseases and torments, diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils. Now, this is in your Bible, too, Matthew 4, 23, and 24. Those that were possessed with devils and those that were, that were lunatic. You know, I've, I've said that the time is coming when we're going to empty the insane asylums. Most of those people in there are, have been hurt by the devil and they need somebody to walk in and speak power and speak anointing and, and speak glory and speak healing to and tell them to come on out of there in Jesus' name. Those that were lunatic and those who had palsy and it says, and he healed them. Jesus is the mighty healer. The devil is the mighty uh, one that makes people sick. Jesus is the mighty one that releases them from that, that sickness. And so we'd like for you to know that there could be blindness. And the Bible says there is some that's caused by the devil. There can be grievous vexation. Uh, there can be a spirit of uncleanness. Uh, there can be a spirit of suicide. In Matthew 17, 15, he says, Lord, have mercy upon my son. He is a lunatic. He is sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and often to the water, you see, of trying to destroy uh, this child, throwing him into a fire and throwing him into the water, a spirit of suicide. Suicide is a spirit that has to be resisted by the mighty power of God. One of the strongest things to deliver anybody from is epilepsy. In Mark 9 and 20, it says, And they brought unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit 
tear him. And he fell to the ground, wallowing and foaming. You see, uh, epilepsy and convulsions is one of the bad ones to pray for. But God is victorious, and you can be victorious in Jesus' name. There are all kinds of, of, of bondage and oppressions uh, that, that come upon human beings. In John 10 and 10, it says, A thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and they might have it more abundantly. That's the difference between Satan and, 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 uh, and Jesus Christ. The devil comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. 